Um, so this, the second speaker of uh, the afternoon is uh, Professor Vladimir Georgiev from University of Pisa. And uh, he will talk about the H1 scattering uh, for the mass subcritical NLS. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you very much for the invitation and the possibility to participate in this uh, uh, conference. This is uh, really a pleasure for me to um, honor to participate conference uh, dedicated and uh, in honor of uh, Piero Marcati. Uh, I think at the beginning I want to say something, uh, and you shall explain shall explain you uh, two things. First, one statement, and then uh, one uh, this I call triang Bermuda Triangle. And uh, the statement is that I am in uh, Italy, uh, mainly thanks to Piero. So I came, uh, was, uh, there was a call for a position at uh, L'Aquila. Uh, I had the document of this call and then what happened, uh, Triangle of Bermuda. Uh, actually, uh, I took my uh, document certificate that uh, I am called at Pisa, at uh, L'Aquila, and uh, went to the airport to go to Roma, came there and uh, showed my document. The policeman said, um, you cannot uh, enter, you have to have visa. But uh, it was necessary before taking the position to have uh, also so-called blood test. Uh, blood test, to do blood test, you have to stay in L'Aquila. So policeman finally said, uh, Look, you have to have a visa. I explained that in order to uh, take the position, I first have to take blood test. It is impossible because in order to have blood test, I have to take the position. So this was a kind of a terrible situation. So what happened, uh, at the same time, I had uh, possibility to go to Japan, no visa. And you see the triangle from Bulgaria, I go to Italy, uh, one night uh, with the hospitality of the police at Roma airport, and then um, without uh, possibility to take the position, I went to Japan, and therefore there I started to go to Italian embassy to ask for a visa. And here was uh, actually the help of Piero. He did the miracle, and uh, I can say that in two weeks I had a visa and uh, could enter uh, Italy. I can add uh, other stories, but uh, this was one of the things that really for me was uh, something uh, exceptional. So Triangle of Bermuda disappeared and the happy life uh, started and now I am in Italy. Also want to say that um, I really appreciate very much the fact that Piero has uh, many students, created a nice group, strong group. And uh, in the years uh, we in some sense had uh, uh, students from Pisa coming for um, PhD and postdoc position in L'Aquila, and we also have uh, some students from uh, L'Aquila who took a PhD in Pisa and took a position in Pisa. So I think this was really very nice uh, collaboration. And uh, this is uh, finally, uh, I want to say uh, for him, uh, to Piero to be really to have um, to be a happy grandfather, but also to do something that one German mathematician uh, succeeded to do. Uh, probably you know in uh, scattering there is a famous ENS method, and um, uh, this was very effective, uh, simple and uh, effective method. And once uh, Professor ENS have been asked uh, uh, how this uh, method was discovered, and he said very simple. I was retired, I had time. So after retirement, it is very nice to produce some new results. So this is my introduction for you. And um, now let's turn to the scattering because uh, this was promised. Um, this uh, result, uh, probably I shall start in a way different from the other speakers. Let me explain, first of all, what is the problem? I shall try to avoid technical
Ah, to avoid this. Okay. No, no, no problem. I shall not uh, uh, create any uh, complicated things. So let us follow the standard way. Uh, the standard way is this one. So uh, the essential part is that uh, we uh, slightly try to improve result that was already obtained in 84, 83, 84. Let me explain you what is uh, the problem concerning with nonlinear scattering. Uh, you see, we have a problem similar to the uh, previous talk. The only thing uh, P now is any uh, P that is bigger than zero and uh, smaller than four over N minus two. This um, four over N minus two is uh, important and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, upper bound that uh, we shall see is connected with uh, critical value of p that is uh, uh, in case when p is 4 over n minus 2 this is energy critical uh, and less the sign plus minus uh, correspond to uh, focusing and defocusing case and from the very beginning i shall say that we are working on defocusing case so the sign is plus the dimension the dimension is any dimension one, two, where we put no restriction for upper bound of P, or N bigger or equal than three, where we have this natural restriction that P is below that uh, four over N minus two. Uh, again, uh, Strickerts and uh, nice a priori estimates, they show uh, a local um, and uh, for the focusing case, global well poisonous. Um, and uh, we can say that uh, first uh, quantity that is conserved is uh, energy. And you see again, the role of the focusing case, the sign plus, therefore we have control of H1 norm. And uh, simply to have complete information, the energy critical case originally was uh, uh, studied in the radial case by Burgen, and then later on, the radial case is uh, studied by the group of four, five, uh, the famous group of five mathematicians, uh, Coliander, Kills, the Filani, Takok, and Tal. And uh, let me now say two words about what is wave operators, what is completeness of wave operators, because this shall be the key point in our talk. Of course, uh, we shall. Um, consider the Cauchy problem for our defocusing uh, case. And uh, in this case, uh, we have um, uh, the fact that uh, problem is very well posed. We, we have uh, kind of uh, nonlinear semi-group associated with our problem. And uh, we can say that, uh, of course, if this is nonlinear, uh, the estimate is not linear. We have, uh, in the case when we are in energy uh, subcritical case, uh, we have uh, estimate. So again, this uh, UT of F is simply notation for the solution of our Cauchy problem with initial data F. Uh, typically, you see that uh, locally and globally, it is well posed in H1. Therefore, we shall speak from now on mainly about H1. And the wave operator, classical, you know, the linear scattering, a classical wave operator is defined as a strong limit of these uh, 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 operators as t goes to plus infinity. I shall consider only the future. Forget about t minus infinity to understand at least the behavior for, uh, for, the, for the future when t goes to plus infinity. And uh, of course, uh, typical statement in scattering theories, wave operators, it's easy to be, uh, to prove that they exist. The most complicated thing is completeness. So what is the completeness? In this case, uh, we have to characterize the image of the wave operators. This means if, for example, I take F, in H1, I am looking for something that is G, G 
such that the image of G is our F. This is the definition of uh, completeness of wave operators. If we can say that the image is the whole H1. But these are formal definitions. For the moment, no statements. And uh, using the nice a priori estimates of our uh, UT, we can show that, uh, for example, if this uh, completeness is satisfied, we can rewrite the um, uh, completeness alternatively in this way. Given F, can we find G so that our nonlinear evolution is approximated by linear Cauchy product? Again, this is only for T going to plus infinity, and I consider so-called element with index plus because when you take T going to minus infinity, this shall be um, the other uh, wave operator. Okay, you can uh, also use the fact that um, uh, our property of completeness can be expressed in this way, but maybe in our uh, talk we shall um, pose the following question. Given f, how to find g? So that this is satisfied. Let us see what is known about this question. First, we start with appearance of some critical powers. This 4 over n minus 2 is uh, energy mm, uh, critical power. 4 over n is mass critical power. So we consider the case, uh, first case that uh, is very well studied, mass supercritical and energy supercritical. These are classical results. I promised to work to speak about the results of uh, 40 years ago. So this is Geneva Velo. Uh, for dimension one and two, uh, Schrodinger with uh, Klein Gordon was studied by uh, Nakanishi. 99. Mass critical case uh, recently, uh, relatively recently, between 2012 uh, and 16, was done in the mass critical case uh, by Dobson. And uh, our uh, interest now is mass subcritical case t smaller than 2 over n. Therefore, in this case, uh, again, we pose the question about uh, completeness of wave operators. But of course, there is classical result of no scattering. Therefore, next, com uh, next uh, exponent that appears is 2 over n, namely, for less, P less than 2 over n, this was uh, bar up uh, no scattering result, again, classical one, while for P between 2 over n and 4 over n, one should expect scattering in so-called space sigma 1. What is sigma 1? It is um, H1 intersected with this space. I found in the original... Um, for example, one of the works of um, um, Kazenat and Weisler on this uh, topic that um, they call this uh, fastly decaying solutions. Also in the talk of uh, Konstantin, we saw that this weight that appeared in the uh, estimates, and this is of the same type. Uh, you take, uh, multiply x by the function and then take L2 norm. And uh, now is uh, we are arriving at uh, what is our main question. Yajima Tsutsumi, 84, considering the case between 2 over n and 4 over n, the focusing case, all dimensions n equal 2, very short work, but very elegant proof, they showed the following. Take phi in sigma 1, so you take your initial data for the nonlinear problem in sigma 1, and then you can find and uh, solve the completeness in L2. Therefore, there exists T plus in L2, so that this convergence in L2 is fulfilled. And you have uh, completeness of wave operators in L2. What was our purpose? Our purpose was to improve this result up to H1. This is the essential part of what I want to present. And uh, we shall see uh, what are uh, the main uh, uh, tools uh, to uh, deduce this uh, property. Therefore, 
our main uh, goal shall be to consider again mass subcritical case P bigger than 2 over N. 2 over N was, um, for example, for uh, small data scattering, it is very well known that you can build scattering uh, with sigma 1 when um, P is uh, bigger than 2 over N. So when we are between 2 over N and 4 over N, then uh, essentially we repeat uh, uh, Yajima Tsutsumi result with uh, the only additional uh, property that our P plus found by Yajima Tsutsumi actually is in H1 and the convergence is in H1. This is um, the result that shows the completeness of wave operators when uh, we work in H1 space and P is between 2 over N and 4 over N. In this direction, uh, let me say that number of um, critical um, uh, nonlinearities um, uh, is not finished. Now we have another critical nonlinearity that is uh, found by, I thought, Kazenov and Weisler. This critical nonlinearity is uh, root of this um, equation where n is the space dimension. And uh, this P star number is something that is above 2 over N. So you cannot approach 2 over N, but uh, with this critical exponent, P star, you can practically solve your completeness uh, problem as you um, proving that P plus in sigma 1 and you can have here stronger convergence in sigma one. Therefore, it remains uh, uh, unclear what will happen between P star and two over N. Till the moment we can could show that uh, scattering and completeness is only in H1. Okay, so uh, from now on, I want to um, Yes, this is the result of Weisler and Kazenov. And uh, let me try to explain the idea of the proof. Uh, probably people that work on um, uh, scattering for um, mass supercritical, mass subcritical, energy subcritical, not energy, sub uh, energy supercritical because already, already uh, Giliola mentioned this uh, nice result of Merrill about blow up of, uh, in the case of uh, uh, defocusing NLS, but if we're in standard case uh, below the energy and below the mass critical case, uh, then uh, we can say that um, for scattering, uh, always you need kind of viral uh, identity, kind of uh, interactive uh, Moravets, uh, nice um, estimates that um, are part of the proof of uh, the um, uh, existence of um, H1 scattering or scattering uh, for our problem. Um, surprisingly, at the beginning, we didn't know uh, whether or not it is necessary to use uh, viral type identity. And you shall see in one delicate point that really it is crucial to use kind of, uh, I, I could say, half viral identity. Because typically viral identity, what you do? You take this uh, X square times uh, solution square integrate and make two derivatives. Of course, these are two steps. First, you compute first derivative, then you compute second derivative. In some cases, for example, for fractional NLS half wave equation, it was crucial to use the second part. But now for this problem, it was crucial to use only the first part, so the first derivative. And we, sh we shall see how this is done. Uh, the other key idea is uh, to follow, once we said we follow uh, Yajima Tsutsumi, uh, pseudoconformal transform. This is one possibility. At the end, uh, because this was in collaboration with uh, specialists in lens transform, uh, Nikola Burk, Nikolai Tsvetkov, they proposed uh, the same result, uh, proof, alternative proof based on lens transform. But I shall concentrate only on pseudoconformal transform because this is also sufficient for our purpose. So what is the pseudoconformal transform? 
it is uh, represented here. If you have solution of uh, the Cauchy problem for NLS, and if you make this substitution, so from U, you go to W, this is W bar, then practically you keep the Schrodinger equation, but the price you pay is appearance of uh, small t to the power minus alpha in front of the nonlinearity. It is important to uh, realize that um, we use the same notation t for this equation and the same for w, but due to this uh, choice, one over t, um, I have to stress the attention that uh, for this Cauchy problem, we can take, for example, initial data at t equal one up to infinity, while for the second one, we start from t equal one and infinity now becomes zero. So t in this equation goes to zero. And we have practically local problem for uh, interval zero, one. Uh, here I try to a little bit to explain uh, how uh, this power t to the power minus alpha appeared. And uh, in order to avoid this misunderstanding with uh, t and one over t, I adapted the notation capital T for one over t to make a difference between small t and the capital T. And we can say now that small t varies from one to infinity, while capital T varies from one to zero. So this is uh, uh, capital T, and we have capital X that is X over T. So if you compute carefully, for example, here I try to compute derivative in X, you see that second derivative in X gives you T to the power two. Um, additional power t to the power two, while in the nonlinearity we have t to the power n over two p plus one. If you compare these two exponents, you can compute exactly what is alpha, and you see that this parameter alpha that is crucial for our uh, treatment is something that is first is positive. Why? Because p is below four over n, and then this is smaller than one, because uh, we consider the case p bigger than two over n. Therefore, uh, we have this parameter alpha that is important between zero and one. This is uh, important. And um, I collected some additional information because from time to time we shall switch from uh, solution U and make a pseudoconformal transform to W. What we know for W, that is the problem in the local interval for T from zero to one. Here I again wanted to underline that for W, we have this, our infinity is exactly at the point T equal infinity, initial, or initial data are at T equal one. So the estimate, a priori estimate for W, we can find also from Yajima is simple, simple multiplication T to the power alpha the T of T. You take this multiplication and you see that this, strange at first sight expression has derivative that is strictly positive. Since our t is in the direction from one to zero, this means that, that if I want to estimate and some t my, let's call this energy, this shall be estimated from above because it is increasing function by the energy at initial moment equal one. Therefore, we have uniform bound of t to the power alpha number of w and we have um, uh, of course control lp plus two norm for us it is crucial that this quantity is under control and alpha is smaller than one okay uh, here for completeness is the situation with you and um, now uh, what uh, we can do and uh, what shall be our final purpose to see where we show, where we need kind of viral identity or viral inequality. Uh, here, once we have uh, control of uh, gradient of W from our previous uh, page, we know that gradient of W is like one over T to the power alpha, but this T goes to zero. So we have kind of singularity there. To cancel the singularity, we multiply by T 
And we see that this expression T naught W goes to zero because our alpha is smaller than one. And when T goes to zero, this quantity is controlled very well. Now let us compute nabla of W. And you see that in the computation appears denominator is T, but what is above is the generator of uh, pseudoconformal transform. So if we multiply by T, then we shall have this nice expression. This quantity goes to zero. But let's see what is this quantity. Our small t was uh, going to zero, and one over t, if we switch to u, shall become very large. Therefore, if I keep this convention, this um, agreement to replace one over small t with capital T, we shall have the next page which is uh, we have this property, gradient of u, now we use capital T, minus Cx over two times capital T u, in L2 goes to zero. So this is a uh, uh, gift of the estimate of Yajima Tsutsumi, and we switch to u. What we have here? We have um, gradient, and we have this quantity. If in some sense we succeed to show that this in L2 has nice limit, then uh, we can say that uh, we shall have kind of control of gradient of U in L2, so H1 control. And uh, what was uh, really nice is um, the fact that when you take, take only L2 norm of uh, this guy, it is possible to show that uh, using T plus the uh, element C plus found by uh, Yajima Tsutsumi in L2, our phi plus uh, with gradient, and gradient of phi plus exists because if we have uniform uh, upper bound of H1 norm, then a weak limit exists, and this weak limit and L2 limit show that phi plus is in H1. And therefore, it is reasonable to take gradient of phi plus in L2. And what was the key point is to show this convergence in norms. If we have this convergence in norm, then we, we can control H1 norm. But uh, what is the problem? Uh, we said uh, to use uh, the viral uh, identity. Uh, typically, we have also version of viral identity with cutoff function. Uh, and uh, always the question is, how we can feel that x goes to infinity when you take the external part of our solution to show that it, in some sense, decays. And here is the main uh, uh, problem that uh, here, L2 norm, uh, we split the domain in two subdomains. On one hand, uh, we have to feel infinity. How we find this infinity? This is explained in our key lemma. If you take epsilon and positive and look for T epsilon and R epsilon in such domain that uh, modulus of X is bigger than R epsilon T epsilon, so you are very, very far away, but keep in mind that modulus of X over T is something that in U was the weight we have used. Uh, if we replace the, this uh, X over T with constant, we can say, very good, our convergence, if we are in the domain where this x over t is uh, bounded, uh, our uh, convergence, um, practically we can use uh, convergence, oh, this is, sorry, there is no gradient here, this thing, please, uh, this, this term here has no gradient, so this is, uh, very crucial mistake without gradient. If you accept this without gradient, then if x over t is bounded, we have usual L2 convergence and L2 convergence is satisfied. But you shall see in the next slide that this is corrected. So here you can see there is no gradient. And what we assert is the same weight multiplied by our solution became sufficiently small in this far uh, away uh, reason, far away from zero. 
far field reason is uh, uh, practically uh, very small. Uh, what is um, uh, here is probably one of the main difficulties uh, in the proof to show this uh, estimate. And the idea of the proof is um, simple, to switch to W. If you switch to W, then this X over T becomes only X. You make a pseudoconformal, switch from U to W, and then we have to show that W satisfies is sufficiently small. What shall be the first step? The first step is to show that uh, this quantity actually uh, is uh, uniformly bounded for all t between 0 and 1. Here, instead, we take only uh, small values of t. So we approach infinity. And um, our first step is to have this uniform bound. Uh, this uh, uniform bound is uh, very simple. Uh, follows directly from the fact that uh, uh, we can say that our initial data are in sigma 1. Therefore, W is also in sigma 1. And then the local problem gives a solution W that is in sigma 1. Thanks to this uh, sigma 1, we can show this uh, uniform boundness, where C of R is a function that for far field domain is like modulus of X. So exactly what we uh, promised for the uh, viral uh, identity. And um, then the next step is count viral identity to estimate derivative. And the first derivative, it is very well known, of this uh, quantity cannot see the nonlinearity. It sees, uh, can um, be estimated. Here, actually, in the right hand side, we have. Uh, the famous expression imaginary part of uh, x um, uh, w nabla w bar and this with Cauchy inequality gives uh, this estimate so what we know here this is uniformly bounded this we already uh, know that uh, gradient is bounded this is uh, Actually, one second. This is exactly what is. OK, I shall explain you. Here is t to the power minus alpha over 2. Remember? <laughs> ah, exactly. Sorry. So from the gradient, we had uniform bound, but uh, it was uh, uniform bound with weight. So this was, uh, when we take square, was t to the power alpha in the left hand side. So this term gives t to the power minus alpha over 2. Well, this guy, we already uh, said this, that it is uniformly bounded. This is a constant. And uh, this means that integrating this uh, inequality, the first zero identity, we can estimate our xw square with um, this uh, uh, value at t epsilon plus integral of uh, this type. And now it is clear how we proceed. First, we choose t epsilon such that this integral is small. And once t epsilon is chosen, we choose r epsilon sufficiently large. Why? Because we know that this quantity integrated for all um, domain is bounded. Therefore, if I take this is uh, the epsilon is already fixed, so we can choose an epsilon sufficiently large so that this is also satisfied. Usual epsilon over 2 uh, trick. And uh, this is the place, the only place where we use kind of viral identity, viral estimate. See, thank you. And now is uh, uh, the end of the story, namely uh, what we want to show and what we promised. Are they supposed to? Program. See. Okay. So our main uh, uh, 
once we control the far field uh, behavior, now we shall see that inside uh, the domain x smaller than rt, we can actually obtain uh, this limit. So fixing r, fixing t, and taking uh, the limit as t goes to infinity, we take um, what we expected from um, the uh, limit. And uh, of course, uh, uh, if we have uh, the fact that uh, this domain has uh, is complementary to the far field domain, then from this uh, uh, limit, we shall take uh, the uh, conclusion of our uh, convergence in H1. So the, that, uh, the term that was uh, in addition to gradient of u is under control and gives exactly this quantity. Uh, here, the situation is very simple because in order to estimate this difference, first you see that here you can make Fourier transform. If you make Fourier transform, this will become weight in X, and weight in X can be taken in front as, uh, uh, as uh, weight, X over T. And here we shall have uh, the difference between Fourier transform of T plus and uh, this expression. So uh, one can say uh, from where this expression is coming, you can uh, really see that uh, linear Schrodinger equation, when you take uh, asymptotic behavior, the leading term is expressed in terms of this uh, Fourier transform calculated and x over 2t. And uh, this term shall be estimated with uh, two terms exactly. So we have ut, minus the free equation. This is our um, purpose to estimate the difference. And we add and subtract this uh, guy connected with um, a to the, uh, with the free equation. So we have two terms. For the first term, since we consider the case x over t smaller than r, we can estimate this from above by r and say, oh, this guy is very nice because here is convergence uh, L2 that is done in Yajima Tsutsumi. This is the point where we use Yajima Tsutsumi. So this term goes to zero as t goes to infinity when uh, r is fixed. For the other term, this is uh, the famous uh, asymptotic expansion of the free uh, Schrodinger equation in terms of Fourier transform. So the second term goes to zero uh, uh, trivially. And in this way, uh, we can say that uh, practically our um, uh, proof is complete. And um, there were, uh, together with pseudo-conformal transform and the tools uh, used by Yajima Tsutsumi, uh, the novelty is uh, the control of um, this uh, weighted L2 term, the term with x over t with u. Once we have uh, control of this guy and obtain the limit uh, is uh, exactly what is expected, uh, we can, uh, in this case, conclude that uh, really we have the key proposition. And uh, in this key proposition, we can, uh, of course, uh, from this domain, switch to the whole domain because we already established that far field uh, uh, part goes to zero. So this is the uh, idea and I think essential parts of the proof. And uh, let me thank for your attention. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Vladimir, for, uh, for the nice talk. So, um, are there any questions? So, Vladimir, uh, is that correct to say that uh, the gain in this uh, property, uh, this integrability is obtained because uh, on the far field uh, uh, using uh, this transformation, which is related to pseudo-conformal, uh, and then uh, you can uh, find a way to use uh, a sort of a version, updated version of the virial identity. Yes, this is... Uh, that, uh, is that the key point? Uh, the, uh, the uh, 
it is important also the choice uh, for which of the two candidates, U or W, we yeah. uh, use uh, viral identity. Yeah. For you, it was inconvenient because uh, no, no, no. But I was saying that w, w is the the one w that is, the right tra is transformed by with the pseudo conformal uh, exactly. variable. Double and uh, this mini viral identity because we use only the first part, uh, one derivative. But this is completely sufficient to uh, show the smallness to fill somehow the the fact that x is very big. And uh, because in principle, this pseudo conformal uh, coordinate. Uh, seems to create a sort of a light cone that is not a real uh, uh, Schrodinger uh, because oh, I, I, you have x over t so you have a, a scaling that is hyperbolic there yes but uh, the, your... then uh, then no no this is a typical property of the the issue but this the composition is not natural with the Schrodinger equation because uh, uh, it would be more natural for a wave of a wave equation that uh, for the Schrodinger Yes, but even for the, the linear equation, uh, x over 2t appeared on Fourier trans when you... No, 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 sure, sure. The, the, I, I, I know the story, but yeah. the, 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 question, the question is that geometrically, uh, it is interesting, this fact that then uh, uh, the virial identity can play a role after this conformal transform. After this, yes. Any questions? So, but let's say related to what Pierre was commenting, if uh, so let's say if you do this uh, pseudo conformal on W, but uh, is there uh, some interpretation in terms of you of this uh, of this quantity that you control? Let's say you have to go back there and. Uh, uh, you so let's mean, say, um, in, uh, the. Um, LP plus two norm of W to switch back to U to see what is controlled uh, or gradient of W. No, gradient of W, exactly, let's say. Gradient of but W, this is really have... strange uh, because we have kind of a uh, mm, small dumping effect with this uh, one over T to the power alpha. So this is not uh, conservation, uh, but uh, this is uh, useful to extract uh, the um, uh, expression with gradient of u plus x over t times u. This we know that uh, goes to zero. And uh, in this way, we can uh, determine uh, h1 term, uh, uh, term, where is gradient of u, and everything then shall be concentrating on uh, x over t. x over t is uh, the... Um, weight that needs um, in W uh, his own treatment. And here this x over t becomes simply x. And uh, we can practically, I think the most uh, important thing is the this viral identity for W because otherwise mm, they cannot give uh, H1 conversions. The key point is viral identity, viral inequality for W. And if you ask, can we do this on level of U? Finally, you can do, but you have to avoid completely the pseudo-conformal transform, but then you have to use the generators of pseudo-conformal transform and carefully to use them. In alternative way, you can replace the uh, pseudo-conformal transform with lens transform. This is also, lens transform is something that uh, uh, practically uh, reduces everything to minus Laplacian plus uh, x square. Uh, instead of usual Laplacian. And here the spectrum is discrete. You have Hermit polynomials. This lens transform has the same property. You replace this one over T with uh, cosine uh, 2T. And uh, the approach should be similar. So I think uh, you can change the, uh, even not transform the equation, but you have to work carefully with uh, these generators of, of pseudo-conformal transform. Any more comments or questions? Okay, so if not, we can uh, thank Vladimir again. We have now 20 minutes of coffee break. <laughs>